Yeah, I, I mean, he, listen, he, where he was six weeks ago versus where he is now, especially in that, that the second set tiebreaker was vintage Novak. He is able to lock down the airs maybe better than anyone I've, I, I've, I've seen in the history of the game. Uh, you know, playing safe, playing margins, but still moving the ball around, still getting the patterns that he wants. When the, the, when the pressure mounts, being able to get your pattern is so important, and he, he does it as well as anyone in the history. Well-deserved, and uh, I mean, he almost has to be the favorite at this point. I like the way he says almost, Andy. <laughs> Who else might be the favorite if not for Novak? Well, there's lots of questions. There's a, there's a certain foot that we have some interest in. Uh, obviously, uh, little old Ch Chucky Alcaraz has, has, has come on the scene and has gotten wins against, uh, against both of them. So it is up for grabs. The crazy thing is kind of what you were alluding to, Jim. Steph Sitsipas, with the successes he's had on this clay court season, and he's been mostly brilliant uh, throughout it with the Monte Carlo win and, and the final here playing well in Madrid, like if, if I had $20 to bet, he might be fourth on my list of favorites, even though he's had this standout season and arguably been the most consistent uh, throughout the, 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 the kind of bigger sample size of it. Chucky Alcaraz, got to love that. In fact, we're going to talk about this later on TC Live because we've got the latest DraftKings odds on who is actually favored to win Roland Garros, and it might surprise you. 38th Masters 1000 title now for Novak Djokovic. He'll enter Roland Garros as the world number one. But what stood out to you? today, Jim, about him being able to close it out in straight sets against Stefano Yeah, as he Pass. builds on his lead here for the Masters 1000s title, I, I loved his forehand all week. I got to say, he came up against some of the bigger forehands in the semifinals with Casper, Casper Ruud, and the finals against Tsitsipas, and his forehand was the best on the court in both of those days. And, and we probably give it short shrift because of how amazing his backhand is, but his forehand's the kill shot. And he was so good moving Tsitsipas into Tsitsipas's forehand corner and then being able to exploit the backhand space. Uh, so good tactics and execution. Somewhat surprisingly, he went away from that in the second set when Tsitsipas's first serve numbers started to increase a little bit of tension in, the, in a tension-free opening set, obviously, six love. I, I just love the way that Novak was able to hit reset button save it out when, when uh, CC Boss was trying to send it to the third set and then play that buttoned-up tiebreak where he, it looks like he's pushing the ball, but he's really just daring his opposition to do something, do anything, and most often what they do is make mistakes. And that's what happened again today. He is the oldest champion in the open era in Rome, Andy, and, and we talk about what he's been able to do over the last four tournaments. That loss in Monte Carlo to Alejandro Davidovich Fokina in three. What's the biggest growth, development you've seen from Djokovic then? to now raising the trophy in Rome? Well, I think committing to the process, right? Going to Belgrade and grinding through those matches, which Jim mentioned on air, lost the first set in all four of his matches there. Body was super fatigued, but still went through those paces. That was necessary. I, I, I tweeted out after that, that was exactly the kind of week that he needed in order to make Roland Garris the priority. Madrid was, was a little better than that. He played well last week, ran into uh, old Chuckster like we talked about before, but then coming into Rome, uh, obviously Nadal taking the loss, opportunity knocked, and listen, Novak delivered. It's so hard, and why I appreciate the big three so much is winning matches you're supposed to win all of the time is so difficult with that pressure set. And he just went through it again. Second serve was tight, was barely was barely getting him up above 70 miles an hour in that second set breaker, but went into lockdown mode. As Jim mentioned, it looks like he's pushing. He's not. He's finding the pattern that he wants to get into and does it as well as anyone. Is this prime Djokovic right now, Jim? Is, is he in all of his powers now? I mean, I, I think we need to wait and see if he gets pushed deep into a fifth set to see if the – that's mm -hmm. my only question. It's not game right now. His game is where it needs to be. It's everything you'd, you'd want it to be if you're a Djokovic fan, which I am. We still wonder, because of the problems he had early in this clay court season with his, with his lungs, could he actually last in long matches? He did not get tested this week. We saw him play well against Alcaraz in over three and a half hours in Madrid. Didn't look like he was flagging on energy. So maybe that already has answered the question, but I think he's built up what he needs to to believe in himself uh, going into Roland Garros. He gets another sort of probably a couple days off now and then, then start to slowly build towards the opening round. I think he's perfectly primed, and he, he's erased the questions that are now all of a sudden firmly in front of Rafa Nadal.